Hello gardeners, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, we take that science and we apply it to all things gardening and plant care. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, give this video a thumbs up and join our awesome crew. If you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. You are looking beautiful or handsome as ever. So today I am doing a video officially for Murica. No, I'm just kidding. But not really because I have a lot of folks that are a little bit farther down south in a different zone than I am asking why are my peppers and tomatoes still green and why are they not turning red and so in today's video we are going to apply the science to exactly what's going on in your garden but also how to solve the issues so you can finally eat those tomatoes you've been watching for weeks. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So we're gonna go down to one of my very many uh, tomato patches and my dogs are acting like total lunatics. So I apologize um, for them panting. It is hot out, so I, I do for forgive them a little bit, but not very much because that was the demon dog from the last video about destroyed corn. So let's find some tomatoes that are green. Canada is not nearly as far as the majority of you guys are, but let's find some tomatoes that are green and look at exactly what's happening. Okay, so this is in front of one of my tomato patches, which I am doing an experiment with. If you guys have been on the channel long enough, you do know I am trying an experiment with all my tomato beds, trying different types of fertilizer to see which gives me the highest yields. So I'm doing a control bed, which is this bed, a conventional bed, but also an organic and then a hack bed, which is things like eggshells, banana peels and all that stuff. So I'm actually going to be doing an upload video for that tomorrow. It is coming out. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, tap the notification bell so you do not miss it because I'm going to show you some stuff that is just crazy that's happening. And it's it's pretty staggering, actually, from especially from a scientist perspective. It's it's pretty wild what I'm seeing. So behind me is my tomato patch. You can see one of my green, oh, I gotta go this way. Oh, he's so cute. But mine are nowhere near being ripe. So what causes them to stay green for as long as they are? So here I'm in front of actually one of my organically fertilized patches. And you can already see that's the destruction dog, Kane. And he's already destroying, he's destroying my lettuce, my parsley. He's eating grass right now. But anyways, you can already tell that my foliage is a lot less dense on this plot compared to my control or even my conventional. So again, tomorrow we'll get into that. But for right now, let's talk about exactly why tomatoes don't turn green. So one of the main factors in why tomatoes have a reddish color to them or an orange or any color at all is actually because of a chemical called lipocene and obviously keratin as well, which I'm sure you're more familiar with. But lipocene is actually an incredibly valuable substance that is great for human consumption as well. It's actually noted to decrease your chances of heart disease. So that is what causes the tomatoes to turn red. If we don't have enough production of this chemical or we don't have the movement of this chemical through the plant to the tomato, we don't end up with colored tomatoes. We end up with green ones or a lightly colored tomato that's maybe a, a light pink, which is possible by the way, or a kind of washed out orange. And this same idea of lipocene applies to things like peppers too. So anyone who's grown bell peppers or hot peppers, any pepper, you're going to know that notice that, that the fruit starts out green and then it ripens similar to what a tomato does. So without that lipocene chemical, we don't get that red coloration. So what stops the production of lipocene? Well, the first one maybe being obvious is that the tomato simply just isn't ready. Tomato production starts at the point of fertilization. And if you watch my video on pollination, you'll know more about the flower structure and exactly what goes on in that process. But from the time pollination happens, it's six to eight weeks before you start to see any sort of tomato, which isn't a ripened tomato, but just a tomato in general. Now, you're probably wondering, well, I don't know when my flower was fertilized, so how do I know where I am within that spectrum? And 
a really good rule of thumb is from the moment you see a tomato, which I will insert some B-roll of exactly what I'm talking about, when you start to see a tomato of about this size, you can probably guess you're about four to five weeks away from a fully sized tomato formation. From the moment it is fully formed, you can then start to expect lipocene to be deposited into that tomato to cause that bright red effect. If lipocene production is enabled in any way, you can technically have a lighter yellow or a pinkish tomato that will actually rot on the vine despite it not looking like it's ready. It is actually ready. It's just very flavorless, very watery, and just not very good. Just because you don't have red tomatoes doesn't mean that the tomato isn't edible. It is technically at an edible state. It's just, there's no color to that tomato and you're missing a lot of other hormones which add kind of that sugar production and that flavor factor to it. What causes this? Well, there's a number of things. First thing, obviously, is the tomato just simply not being ready, like I mentioned before, but the second thing is actually cooler weather. So heat is actually a huge factor in any plant's life cycle to know what stage it should be in flowering and fruit production. Heat triggers exactly triggers the plant to know exactly where it is in its growing season. If it is cold, it is going to assume that it's still in the beginning stages of growth and therefore it's not going to put a rush on seed production because it's going to want to make sure that it drops its mushy fruit if we left it at a warm optimal time to ensure germination. So think like the plant is thinking. So cool weather means inhibited lipozine production. So you're probably wondering, well, what's the definition of cold weather? We'll say it is 70 to 70, below 70 degrees Celsius. So for the Canadians, that is below 20 degrees Celsius. Now you're probably thinking, well, it's plus 25 or it's 75 degrees Fahrenheit every single day. It's your nights that you have to worry about. If your nights are getting below that 20 degrees Celsius or that 70 degrees Fahrenheit, that's probably a sign that that may be your issue is the cold weather. But we have a solution for that. You should have to wait till the end of the video. The third reason is actually heat. So again, the life cycle. The plant just wants to make sure that its seed can germinate and everything will be all right. So if it's too hot, it knows that, well, my babies may dry out if they start germinating. So I need to be careful about producing or ripening too quickly. So heat is another factor that inhibits lipocene production. What is considered too hot? That would be around 85 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 30 degrees Celsius plus. The plant is focused on water conservation. Number one, hands down, focus is water conservation. It wants to make sure its stomata and guard cells stay closed. It want to make, wants to make sure that its leaves are positioned in the proper way so that they're able to cool down. It is focused on grabbing as much water as it possibly can to ensure its survival. It has nothing in its plant brain of ripening tomatoes or making a a beautiful red a luscious apple for you it doesn't care right now its main focus is on survival through a heat wave so unfortunately that's just a fact so what do you do what do you do if it's too cold it's too hot or you just really want tomatoes like right now and you're like i don't care how long it takes i don't care if i'm being impatient i want to have my tomato sandwich well the good news is it is fixable, but the fastest way to get it will me mean your tomato plant will no longer exist for the rest of the summer, and that is topping. And we talked about this when it came to our tom tomato pruning video, and that is essentially topping off the new growth. That is going to trigger all the growth below it to put all of its focus on tomato production. So that is number one way to do it, but there are other ways that won't completely finish off your plant. The other three ways, again, are in reference to my tomato pruning video, which is get rid of your suckers so that your plant can focus on fruit production. 
Secondly, get rid of any of those excess flowers that are starting to flower but haven't yet been pollinated and started to ripen. You could remove those as well. And then thirdly, get rid of all of your small tomatoes. So anything that's really tiny on the vine that you don't think is going to make it before your frost hits, get rid of those. But we're only at the end of July, so I would caution against using any of those methods to ensure riper tomatoes sooner just be patient and wait and one of the best ways if you absolutely want to eat those tomatoes is simply just to clip off just that flower bunch from the main stem clip that off bring it indoors tomatoes produce their own ethylene gas and therefore they will self-ripen on the vine in your kitchen without harming your tomato plant if you want them sooner just simply clip them off the vine and you will still get the same amount of greatness maybe with a little bit less flavor indoors i want to thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up i absolutely had to do it because the amount of dms and questions on instagram facebook and YouTube I was getting about this was ginormous and I thought no I gotta do this because if my subscribers and my viewers are asking these questions it's clearly something you guys want to know about so I hope you enjoyed it if you did be sure to let me know if this video you know is geared towards you because you asked me that question let me know in the comments below if it was helpful or if I just confused you more or if you need more information and I will gladly reach out to you guys I will talk to you next time happy gardening bye